Welcome back to Let's Play Baldur's Gate in Ents Edition. And you're gonna say what, what, what's happening? Where, where's, where's our party? And was, well, today I wanted to do uh, an episode on uh, how to make a character for yourself. How to make a protagonist? Because I, I saw from the first one, I just imported my my uh, do back, and I wanted to show you how to do a protagonist. How to make a various sort of protagonist. So we're gonna do a new game, duh. We're gonna pick a gender. We're gonna make a male. You can make a female if you want to. We're just gonna make a male. There's no downside from male or female. Just the picture, the, the portrait choice that you got, and pretty much shit. And uh, the voices. You're gonna have a female voice if you use a female. So we're going to take this guy, because we don't care, because this tune will not see the light of day. Uh, it's just here, so that I can show you how to make uh, a character. So these are your races. You got humans. Uh, so human is pretty normal. Uh, they also have the dual class uh, ability, and they can't multi-class. That's because they have the dual class uh, ability. Uh, the dual class, uh, I'm going to... Explain that to you when I'm gonna do it with Emoen because Emoen will do a class into a mage in my let's play. But uh, dual classing for short is not multi classing because uh, your other class will not gain levels. You will be in your new class and then you're gonna stick in that class until you uh, go higher than your old class. But then afterwards, you're going to have your powers from your old class, but you won't gain any level in that old class anymore. I know it sounds complicated, and it is, but it's not. Seriously, it is not. I'm just, I'll am just i go into it later with Emoen. So, and then you get elves. So elves have, uh, this is where you get your racial abilities. Uh, elves get a 90% resistance against charm and sleep magic, which are pretty cool because if you see my let's play, mages uh, tend to do well. You didn't see that yet, but they tend to charm and they tend to sleep. Not so much though. So don't pick elves because you're gonna resist against sleep and charm because the, the, the enemy mage don't use those kind of spells, seriously. And in Prevision, eh, we don't mind. Uh, the tackle bonus is pretty good, and uh, this is why elves uh, make good protagonists if you're going the fighter mage route, or fighter fighter mage thief route. Uh, I'm going to make a fighter mage uh, for this uh, little explanation, and we're going to break the game. Uh, they get plus five, uh, uh, minus 5% open lock. Plus 5% pickpockets, plus 5% to move silently, and plus 10% hide in shadows. This is uh, thief skills, so if you do a thief, he's going to start with that. And his stats will be plus 1 dexterity and minus 1 constitution. So he won't have much constitution, but plus 1 dexterity is pretty badass. Moving on to half elves. Half elves, well, they get uh, their elves that breed did with human so they are half elf now so the half elves gain 30 percent resistance against charm and sleep magics they get in for visions and they get plus 10 percent to pick pockets and plus five percent to eye eye shadows i myself if you're going for an elf go true health don't go to for the half elves bullshit yes you don't have well you don't put first you don't have the plus one dexterity but you don't have the penalty of minus one constitution, but plus one dexterity is pretty good. If you're doing a thief or a fighter even, pretty badass, you want that dexterity. So don't choose half elf. You can go if you want. If you want to make an half elf and you're role playing this, go ahead. I'm just saying as a meta gamer point of view, half elf sucks. Go health. Uh, a dwarf? Well, dwarves are... Uh, I was going to say health or more for magic users than thieves. But dwarves, you're going to see, are really made for fighters. So, uh, there's some thieves dwarves. You can go with thief, but dwarves are made for fighters. They're like, 
this this is their favorite class. They, the favorite class system isn't in the system now because AD and D. Uh, I think the favorite class system was added in third uh, edition or 3.5. This is where they added like classes that have favorite class and. Uh, so you get multi class because you don't have the dual class anymore because it was too complicated. Yes, it is fucking complicated. Good thing you fucking removed it. So, yeah. So, dwarves. Well, you get plus two bonus, bonus to saving throws versus paralysis, poison, and debt. And versus rod staff one. And versus spell with additional bonus based on constitution. So what that means is that you have a whole bunch of saving throws. And so enemies, uh, enemies uh, spellcasters will have a hard time putting that don't make a character just for that seriously don't make a, a dwarf for this shit it's doesn't like yeah plus two bonus is good but if they're gonna fucking come uh, confuse you or charm you they will trust me they will okay so infravision pretty badass uh well infravision Provision, okay, we don't care. So, plus 10% open locks, plus 15% find traps, plus 5% detect illusion, and plus 10% set traps. Um, it's pretty cool for a thief, the plus 15%. Well, for the thief, I'm going to tell you for for now, the thief skills, you want which the ones are good. Pickpocket, open lock, find traps, and uh, hide in shadows. Those are your four skills that you want. Uh, find trap is one of the pr the most dominant one because you want your teeth this is going to be like his one and only job per, per per se to be in a dungeon to move silently and just scout for traps or scout scout rooms that's that's their job so see if you're a teeth in the second edition that's what you're going to do mostly <laughs> you're all go you're always going to be uh in the in 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 the dark, moving, scouting, finding traps. Oh, I'm gonna find traps. I'm gonna find. Oh yeah, there's a trap. I'm gonna. That's what Thieves does. And then you get the plus one Constitution, minus one in Dexterity, and minus two in Charisma. I don't know why they have minus two in Charisma, and the half forks doesn't. Seriously, half forks don't have that malice. I don't. I don't know. So yeah, dwarfs are pretty cool. If you want to make a fighter, a uh, dwarf. Pretty badass. You get 19 in Constitution, which is pretty good. Then moving on to Affling. Affling, if you're doing anything else than a thief with an Affling, you're doing it wrong. Afflings are pretty badass thieves. Uh, they have the plus two bonus to saving throws like uh, the dwarf. So, like the dwarf, don't make an Affling just for those saving throws. Uh, they have plus one taco bonus with slings. Slings. Um, yeah, slings are all right. I use them for my mages, but if I can put a short bow, that's better than a sling. That's my opinion. Uh, so afterward, you got plus five percent open locks, plus five percent five traps, plus five percent pickpockets, plus ten percent move silently, and plus fifteen percent hide in shadows. Uh, this rocks. Seriously, Affling makes the best teams and that's the home thing they make seriously <laughs> and then you get the plus one dexterity which is pretty awesome for a thief minus one strength and minus one wisdom this is what hurts minus one strength because thieves in Baldur's Gate single class thief sucks okay uh, it's cool for your party members for one of your party member NPC that you will recruit because you don't care that that's gonna be their own utility, but for your character, uh, I would suggest going fighter teeth. And fighter teeth with a minus one strength, mm, you're at 17 strength, which is not that great, seriously. So, you get a gnome. Gnome is uh, like a dwarf, but they can do uh, illusionists. They it's the only class that can multi class into um, a kit. Uh, basically, when you multi-class, you cannot use a kit. Like, if you want to do a fighter mage with an elf, well, you can't use... Uh, you can't go in the kit. You can't go, oh, I, I, I'm going to be a berserker mage with an elf. No, that doesn't work. You got to be a fighter and a mage. A regular fighter and a regular mage. Uh, Gnome can be an illusionist. 
slash whatever they want to be. So they can be a fighter slash illusionist. They can be a illusionist slash slash thief. They can be a cleric illusionist. So you get my drift. So that's the only race that can do that. Uh, they get the 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 same bonus that the dwarves and halflings have. Uh, they have infravision, of course. Every fucking race has infravision, except I think except humans. So. And then you got the plus one. Uh, no, wrong guy. So you got plus five percent open locks, plus ten percent fine traps, plus five percent si uh, move silently, plus five percent iron shadows, plus ten percent detect illusion, and plus five percent set traps. And then you get your plus one intelligence and minus one wisdom. Uh, I don't know if they can become other kits. I'm gonna try. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna try to. I wanna see if they can be another kit after. Or after I'm gonna talk to, uh, to the half orc. So the half orcs. Well, half orcs. Uh, if you're doing anything other than a fighter, don't, don't make an half orc. Could be an half orc uh, cleric if you want. Fighter cleric. Uh, half orcs fighter. If he, if he isn't a Fighter slash thing that he can be, don't make an half orc. Why? Because you got a plus one strength and plus one constitution. And he can't be mage because of the minus two intelligence. But he's an half orc. You're gonna you're gonna use the half orc to be a fucking burly fighter like my berserker who is wrecking everything. So half orc. I like half orcs. I like doing fighters. But we're gonna make a uh, fighter mage. But first, I want to see if gnomes can be another clit. So, yeah, uh, we're gonna. No, they can't. They can't be any other kit. They they just can't be illusionists. Illusionists. I'm gonna say it to you right now. Illusionists and the second uh, and the sequel. You're gonna miss on a lot of good spell. Uh, the sequel, you got a uh, necromancy spell, I think it's 7th level or 8th level spell. It's Abigalim Orid Wilting. This spell wrecks people. Uh, in Throne of Bulb, mages will do the spell and you're going to ache them for that. And you're going to use the spell and you're just going to say, <laughs> You can't do shit to my spell. So yeah. Uh, illusionists can't learn that because why? Because uh, there's there's schools of magic that come fixed to each other. So an illusionist can't learn necromancy, and necromancy has a lot of potent spells, and they won't be able to. Uh, illusionists won't be able to learn those spells. So, hmm, this is what sucks about uh, illusionists. So we're gonna use an elf. We're gonna make an elf. I know it's a fight. Uh, it's a human here, but let's pretend it's a it's an elf, okay? So it's an elf. So we're gonna do. Uh, we can be a fighter, and you see, that's that's all the the classes that an elf can be. So you got a, your fighter, and in the in this edition, uh, you got your barbarian in your fighter. Uh, you got your Berserker, Wizard Slayer, Kansei, and then Barbarian. This is our, this is all your fighter kit. Uh, I'm gonna show you also, if you're a Dwarf, you can be a Dwarven Defender. Yeah, they added a, a Dwarven Defender in the NS edition. Uh, Dwarven Defender are pretty cool. Uh, the only thing that sucks is that, uh, you can't, you can't exceed eye mastery, so you won't be able to be to be Grand Master, which is five slots in axe in axes and warhammer, and you can't exceed specialize in other weapons, so you won't be able to put another slot in other weapons, which is, mm. but uh, this axe in Throne of Ball, the one of the best weapon is an axe. So, you're not missing much. But, I want to do an elf. I want to do... A, I'm just going to show you all the all the kits and stuff like that. So, you got the ranger, got archer, got stalker, 
and you got Beastmaster. Stalker is pretty cool. Uh, they have spells that are pretty cool. Beastmaster, don't touch it. Seriously, don't, don't, never, ever, ever, don't, don't use Beastmaster, please. You can if you want, if you want to role play that you're a Beastmaster. No, I'm, I'm, I'm kidding. But seriously, if you want a meta game, you want a, a great, uh, a great Ranger class. I would suggest uh, being pure Ranger or being Archer. Archer is pretty cool. Seriously, <laughs> they're they're fucking good. Uh, the only thing about Archer is that you uh, you have to understand that uh, in Baldur's Gate 2, the bows don't go until plus three, and even then, people can have uh, there's some creature that has immunities against plus three. So that's all in like you can be an archer in Baldur's Gate one. If you want to stick in Baldur's Gate one, and you're not, you're never gonna touch the sequel. Archer is pretty cool. In the sequel, there's better choices. Actually, there's better choices. If you want to make an archer, just do a fighter. Seriously, seriously, that's one of the things that I hate about rangers. In I, th and I think the uh, Wizard of the Coast, uh, they're now thinking rethinking the ranger class because that's one of my beefs is that the ranger class people are always thinking about the archer but if you see a fighter if you look at the fighter the fighter can't be an archer and way better than your fucking ranger that's the thing about rangers what do you got oh yeah you got druid spells that you can't exceed uh that the other guy who's been a druid can exceed like, yes, of course, people say, well, you can use Entangle, and then you can be better in archery. Fuck off. I'm going to be a fighter, and I'm going to fucking wreck you in archery. Because I'm going to put Master in my fucking range weapon, and I'll have the same feats as you, man. Seriously. So that's why in the 5th edition, they put some kits and stuff like that, and the Ranger is way better in the 5th edition. They rethink about what they did. 3.5, if you want to be an archer, my my man, go fighter, and it's the same thing in the second edition. Second edition, fighter. Seriously, if you want to be a master of weapon, use a fighter. Cause rangers, yeah, they do have cleric spells, but we don't care about cleric spells. Seriously, you're gonna have a cleric and a druid or a druid with you. So that's what we want. So carry on, clerics. Uh, clerics are pretty cool. They have awesome spells pretty cool but we're not gonna do a cleric we're gonna do a fighter mage so we're gonna do a fighter mage sorcerers are like mages but instead because a mage will they won't learn spells per level they're gonna be learning slots they're they're gonna be uh, they're gonna add slots of memorization to their spell but they won't be able to like a mage if he goes to level two you won't learn any new spell. You got to scribe your spells. You got to use a scroll, scribe it in your mage book, and then now you know your spell. Sorcerer is different. Sorcerer, you're level one, then you're going to level two. Now you can learn spells, but you can't scribe spells as a sorcerer. Sorcerers is the the limited spells option that you have. That's the only thing. Sorcerer, if you want a mage that can do everything, go for a mage. If you want a sorcerer, that's why I, I I'm gonna have a Baloth in my party when I'm gonna kick Nira off. Uh, Baloth will be my sorcerer. Ba Baloth is a is one of the prime example of why a sorcerer works. So Baloth is one of the prime example of why a sorcerer works well as a mage. Uh, with a mage, it's because mage are they are not special agents and they can do a jack of all trade of all spells. But sorcerer, you have only a few and and full of spell that you can use. So that's why we're gonna do a fighter mage. So we're gonna do a fighter mage. Why a fighter mage? Because if you wanna put your fighter mage into sequel, you'll get an easier time in the sequel and the the prequel uh is gonna be a little harder. So we're gonna do a lawful good. Those are all the the alignments I can use. So lawful good uh, is like your goody two shoe. Paladin, you have to be lawful good if you're doing a paladin. Neutral good is a uh, bit lesser good. 
it's they're going to do their own thing but for the social structure of the of their realm and then you got chaotic good which is robin hood stuff like that so we're going to do uh chaotic good i like chaotic good so uh the alignment what is what has changed is the party members that you want to recruit will be uh will be assigned with the good or evil status you want to have science we're good we all want to have a good aligned party so we can keep our party members happy because you don't want your party members to go on happy because they're just gonna leave you so the abilities this is where it takes a lot of time when you're going to do uh, when you're going to create a character it's the abilities change Seriously, you're gonna pass a lot of time. So what we're gonna do is uh, seven seven total roll. That's bullshit. That's shit. Uh, no, I don't want to. No, I don't want to store that. So reroll seven five. That's uh, reroll seventy eight. Oh, that's better. But I don't want seventy. I don't want. I don't want it to. Depends also on the class you want and on the race you want because. Oh, we got 83. I forgot. Okay, so I got 81. We, I know we can get an 83, so I'm going to store this. Store means I'm going to store all these attributes. So I want to keep them. So we're going to try to get a better than 83. Sometimes don't go fast on the reroll. Ah! forgot yeah there was an 85 and I was way too fast on the reroll like I like you saw we don't want to be fast on the reroll so we know we can get an 85 so we have an 83 here 82 mm. I think my 83 will be my best bet so this is why so I tell I tell you this is where uh, you're gonna take the most time out of your character creation is on the ability sheet so I think or 83 will be the best thing we can get I'm gonna try again for a couple few times basically you want when you're gonna do it you want the best core available to your class so uh, 83, 83, we got 83 again, 75, oh, 89, I'm going to store this, this is like one of the best we got, uh, I think we could go to 90, but we're not going to push our luck, so we're going to keep the 89, so for your protagonist, you have two choices, if you want to be the party leader, you want to carry some up, but we're not going to be the party leader, so I want to keep my charisma as low as possible so my minimum is eight for this character because I'm an elf if I was a human or uh, a fork I would go I could go lower than eight but for this character I can only go lower than eight so science we're a fighter mage we don't need wisdom so we're gonna uh, reduce our wisdom to the minimum we need intelligence, we need constitution, we need dexterity, and we need strength. So we're going to start with uh, the strength stat. And I'm going to start with the strength stat because this is a weird stat. So at 17, we're going to put another point in, uh, st uh, in strength. And I'm going to tell you right now, as a fighter in the second edition, when you have 18. And that does just apply to the fighter. If you're a thief or a cleric this doesn't apply you will get a 18 but as a fighter in the second edition of of D, &D or the ad and d rule is that you can go exceptional strength so let's hope you're hoping for 1890 plus it's 1879 so what that means is if i want to um if i want to maximize my efforts i would reroll again this is why it takes a lot of time. So I'm I'm not gonna reroll, but what you want in strength, the best strength is 1890 plus. The best strength for a fighter with an A fork, by the way, A fork, you just bypass this, you get 19 right off the bat, is 1800, which is 1800. 
because what what the AD&D does is that when you add 18 they would say okay roll a percentile uh, dice which is a ten, uh, d10 and a d100 which is another d10 so you roll 2d10 you look at the score and then you say okay I got uh, 93 so okay so your strain is 18 and to the 93rd uh, 93 so that means that you got 93 percent more strain than the other fighters I think that's it but anyways it's 93 93 percent more or something like that so you get a lot more strain so you're way better at your class so we're gonna stick with the 1879 just like I said it's not the maximum you can get so we're gonna get the best dexterity, which is 19, science with an elf. We have an elf, so we're an elf, so plus one dexterity. We're going to put my constitution to 17, because we're an elf, minus one constitution, so we can go to 18. 17 constitution. Uh, we're going to put intelligence, because intelligence is way good for a mage, so 18. And then we got six... Uh, Six points to put. So, Wisdom is your uh, dumb stat. Uh, no, it's not a dumb stat. It's, it's your trash stat in Baldur's Gate. If you're not a cleric. So, if you're not a cleric, you don't need Wisdom. You will never need Wisdom. Because there's no will say it was invented in this uh, in this system. So, there's no will save. It's always saving throw versus la la la. And until you get the sequel and people use intelligence save, uh, you're not going to touch wisdom. Never. So, I'm going to put I'm going to put my charisma to 14. Uh, he's not going to be he's not going to be on my party leader. I'm going to get a paladin for that. And this is why you can switch party leaders and pretty good thing for a fighter mage to switch because your fighter mage you don't want him to use armor because uh, you can't cast bell while wearing armor now people say okay well if you're a fighter mage and can't wear armor why why are you a fighter like seriously fighter why am I a fighter because I will get the attack the minus one tackle every level I will be able to specialize in every weapon I want uh, I will I will be able to put a shield and cast I can have a large shield and cast I can still wear things that a fighter can wear and a mage can't so that's the point and there's the other point in the sequel and it's so ridiculous uh, is that uh, as in the sequel there's gonna be a spell and this is a night level spell it's called time stop and it does what the name implies you time uh, you stop the time for nine round for nine rounds so nine rounds is uh, a round is uh, your character does something Jaira does something Kagan does something Viconia does something and when does something Nira does something and keg does something and then it's back to my character that's one round so for nine round my character can do whatever he wants for nine rounds and then you get the stupid feat greater will run which means I get 10 attack per round so I can outright if I have two weapons if you do a will and you should do a will you get like 10 attack per weapon you get 20 attack 20 attack per round so you're wrecking shit and people can't fucking budge and people can do shit. So yeah, that's the crazy thing. That's why you can't break the game. So we're going to be done with or stat. We got our skills. So skills, if you want to be a one shot. I know I put maces in uh, my let's play. But what we're going to do for this let's play, we're going to put, uh, we're not going to put katanas. I want to put into long swords. And I'm gonna put into uh, a long bow. Science, uh, it will help me. And I'm gonna put into two uh, two weapon style. That's that's what we're gonna put. So done. So these are uh, the spell. So science, we're uh, a mage. I think we got two mage spells that we can learn, so they 
wants us to take these. I won't take these. Well, armor is pretty good. Seriously, armor is pretty OP. Uh, the thing is... Find Familiar is pretty cool. And it only works on... Uh, it's, the, it's the only protagonist. Only the protagonist can uh, cast a spell. So... Uh, what does that does is that uh, the ca the caster receive half the family or total hit points. So that means that you you have a lot more hit points than you used to, you you would have. Uh, the thing is is that if the if the family dies, you lose a point of constitution permanently. So, and you take far damage. So, yeah. We don't have a lot of it, uh, constitution. We have 17 constitution. So, we can lose 16. And then we're going to do the fine family you're back again. And then you can lose another point. And it, so on and so forth. And blah, 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 blah. at zero, you die. In d, d when you have zero constitution, you're dead. You're dead. There's no nothing else to it. You're dead. So, the thing is, yeah, but Gamer Glad can... If you lose constitution when you're using fine family, or why would you use a fine family? Because you can take your fine family here and then put it in your backpack. And that's it. That's the only thing you should do with your family here. Summon it, put it in your backpack. That's it. That's the only thing you should do with your family here, seriously. So, what we're gonna do, we're not gonna. Uh, fine family is pretty cool, but I know a place where you can buy a fire family spell so what I want to do is uh, I want to get uh, the best spell I'm gonna tell you the best spell for a fighter mage armor is pretty cool because you will need armor uh, fine family here also cool identify you will always need to identify stuff always uh, magic missile can go wrong for magic missile protection for protection I wouldn't recommend uh, starting with protection for protection but in you, you saw in my last play where I bought a scroll of protection from protection from Talentier on uh, in I hedge and like uh, the left uh, west of Baragos buy it there you will need this spell there's some instance in the game that you will need a spell set and the sequel I think you need that, but in the sequel, you have other spells that you can do that will do the same thing as protection for petrification. So you won't need that much of resistance. Uh, and then you got sleep. Sleep is pretty cool. So what we're going to do is we're going to put identify and uh, we're going to use. Uh, I would say. No, I'm not going to take identify. I'm going to take magic missile. And I'm going to take armor. Yeah. That's what I'm going to do. No. No. I won't take armor. No. Why? I know why. I'm going to take identify. No. You don't take armor. That's another spell that you don't take. Don't take armor. Why? Because you're going to get an armor scroll right off the bat. The instance you you, you start the game. You go to uh, Winthrop Inn. The, the, the first thing that you unlock. Or force lock. Force it. It's it will be easy. Force it. Boom. Armor scroll. Scribe it. Ooh, you got the armor spell. Always put an armor uh, a, a slot for your armor spell for your fighter mage. If you're a pure mage, I wouldn't recommend it because you shouldn't get it. But take uh, take magic missile. Identify. Identify. That's it. Uh, sleep. We will s get a scroll for that. And the other spells, you will get a scroll for that. But the thing is... Uh, armor, don't put a spell. The best spells are armor, and uh, well, the best spells are identify, magic missile, and find familiar. Because find familiar, your the scroll will be uh, from a long way. But I think you can buy one from Talent Seer also, and that's when you can get the bonus HP and stuff like that. So we're done with the spells. So this is what do we want to memorize? Well, we want to memorize magic missile because we won't get any uh, magic weapon in the first area. So it will be useless to have an identify spell when we can get a magic missile spell and kill people with it. 
So, done. So, this is our appearance. You can slide things. So, these, these are for the hair. These are for the skins. These are for your clothing. And these are your minor clothing, which is the thing there. So, blah, blah, blah. And this is your voice. Uh, your voice. Well, we're not a female, so we're going to put male. Uh, so you got streetwise, an impatient, earnest, a commanding, a jovial. Uh, that's good. That's a good dwarf voice. And then you got a brute, which is what my uh, my guy is. <coughs> Squalor, right Oh, that's pretty good for uh, for health. So we're gonna take this. Then you get your name. So you put blah 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 blah. Or uh, I love. Yeah, you can put spells. I love uh, B G E. So yeah. So this is done. So we accept. This is our your difficulty, and this is your venture for it. So this is how you do. <coughs> Excuse me that excuse me about that. So this is where you do uh this is how you do a character in Baldur's Gate. It takes a long time, but if you have your your uh, mind on a character, um uh, it's pretty easy. It's, it's the only thing is what to expect and what to do. If you didn't if you didn't if your first time going in the game there's going to be a, a lot of trial and error because you don't know what's going to happen in the game, what the developers put in as a weapon, or what people, uh, what developer puts puts in, in spells. Like what the spell, the armor spell. I I was going to put in uh, to put in my first spells, but then I realized, yeah, they they put an armor spell right off the bat. So that's why I, I told you, like, don't put, don't don't memorize the armor spell right now. It's so it's so stupid. You get one. One more spell right off the bat, so you get three spells instead of two. So yeah. So this was a little tutorial about how to make a character, and maybe tomorrow I'll do another let's play and and uh, continue where we left off with uh, or a four party. So see you next time and see you, folks.